Madam Clerk, call the call the roll. Councilman Farnham. Here. Councilman Davis. Here. Councilman Wilson. Councilman Curtis. Here. Councilman Rice. Here. Councilman Liberty. Here. Councilman Conley. Present. Councilman France. Here. And Mayor Brown. Thank you. Thank you. And stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Mr. Curtis, would you lead us in convocation? If you would join me in prayer. Lord God, we come to you this evening. Lord, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. And God, we lift up our schools at this time as next week many of them will go into session. Lord, we ask protection around the kids. We ask protection for the teachers. And God, just give them safety at this time. God, we also lift up Boone, also known as Lawrence, as he passed away this last week. Lord, we ask you to be with Karen, his wife, and the family. And God, just... Uh, just give them comfort in this time of uh, mourning. And God, as uh, the scripture says, we mourn men, they mourn. And God, we just, sometimes we don't understand how these things go, but Lord, we know that you do. God, we lift up our country as we go into this time of uh, uh, politics. And Lord, even if we stand on different sides and have different opinions, Lord, let us come together and still be friends, even though we have different ideas. God, we lift up our city, we lift up our country, and God, we just ask you to watch over them. We lift up this council that we might seek wisdom in all the decisions that we make, that it be done for your glory and in your honor. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Fred, would you lead us in the pledge? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is an open public hearing for the ad valorem tax rate for the year 2020. Last year's assessment value was $68,221,348. Last year's rate was 0.6346. The 2020 assessed value is $68,737,116. This year's tax rate is 0 0.6360. Is there any citizens' comments regarding this ad valorem? Is there any council comments for this ad valorem? No comments? This is the uh, the open meeting is adjourned. Next on the agenda is the con consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion. Second. Mr. Curtis and Mr. Liberty second it. Uh, show of hands, please. <laughs> Do we have any citizens' comments? No comments? Uh, our business spotlight this evening is every blooming thing. Unfortunately, they could not be here, uh, but I will read their proclamation. In honor of every blooming thing, whereas every blooming thing owned and operated by Glenna and Jess Ballou had been a source of happiness and support and comfort for the citizens of Waynesville and Pulaski County for decades. Whereas working with a small staff and a big heart, every blooming thing offers fresh cut floral arrangements and permanent botanicals, from vintage to contemporary, country to traditional, for any and all occasions. Whereas, as a small business, every blooming thing had grown with the community, from the Pulaski County Fair and Rodeos of our yesteryears, to the fundraisers and charitable events that support our local schools today. Every blooming thing has been there to enjoy it all. And whereas every blooming thing is the heart and soul of small businesses, an establishment that stands for hard work and dedication through their work with the Chamber of Commerce, Women of Significance, St. Nick's, Lions Clubs, and Rotary Club, every blooming thing has become a memory for many and their continued support of our community is greatly appreciated. We will now have a uh, board and commission, uh, commission li liaison reports. Uh, Park board, please. Amanda. Thursday, August 13th, 
fundraising options with um, not being able to do anything publicly. Waynesville St. Robert um, fall soccer season has started. Games begin on the 29th of August. Picture week for them will be the 31st of August to September 4th. They are planning on an end of season tournament in memory of Robert Patrick, who's the owner of their current renting company. So they are going to hold two car wash funders for this event. The first one being on the 29th of August at Pizza Hut, and the second one the 19th of September at O'Reilly on Route 66. There are two cheer teams this season with 23 participants. They're, the two age groups are 5 to 8 and 9 to 12. Um, and I mentioned that, so in case there's somebody out there who doesn't have their child in cheer, that is a winter um, sport. So winter sport registration opens up 14 September to 16 October, and that will include, um, along with cheer, wrestling and basketball. Mike and Denise Sievers did come to the park board, and they wanted to thank um, the park board and the city of Waynesville um, for taking care of them with Old Settlers Day and they will be back next year. So that was a, a pleasant visit. Um, park superintendent reports they are caught up on their mowing finally. Uh, occasional rains keep backing them up a little bit, but not as bad as um, what we had experienced there for a little bit. The fields are all ready for soccer. Um, they have been going through and filling holes that have formed on the soccer fields. Um, and so they're doing those as they're reported to them to keep those fills up and going. There was some graffiti on the spring wall. We caught it quickly, uh, painted over it. Um, and they've been currently working on abatements around the city. So, uh, less in the park. There was only one special event that was held last Friday. You have no questions for me? That's yeah. all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Last week, Lawrence passed away. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his friends and family. The city has lost a very dedicated person who has been on the Waynesville Park Board since January 19, uh, 18, 2018 and chairman since May of 2019. Lawrence has been very dedicated to making Waynesville Parks the best it can be for the citizens of Waynesville and others in the county who use it. He will be sadly missed. Let's have a moment of silence for, for Lawrence. Next on the agenda, appointment or reappointment of Amanda Corrin for Park Board. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. A show of hands. I don't vote on that one, do I? <laughs> but I agree with you guys. Thank you. Planning and zoning, Mr. Prince. I don't do planning and zoning. That, that's, nope. that's me. There was no planning and zoning meeting. Okay. Board of Adjustments, Mr. Doyle. So there was a Board of Adjustments meeting uh, held. Uh, the meeting was called to order at 5 o'clock. The first order of business for the Board of Adjustments was the election of the Chairman, uh, the board elected Chairman Mike Dunbar. Okay. After that, there was a public hearing for a variance within the city of Waynesville. The variance came at address 306 Bell Avenue. It was a um, variance for a fence at that location. The fence was installed, um, you know, it aesthetically looked well. Uh, everything was appropriate. However, it wasn't installed per the regulations as it extended beyond the boundaries of what the fence should be in the city of Waynesville. However, um, the board made a motion to accept that variance at that location and the motion passed and therefore the variance was approved. Um, without further ado, Chairman Dunbar adjourned the meeting at 530. Question. Yes, sir. How far out in front of the, prop uh, the, front of the property is it sticking? Um, Nearly to the street. You know, we already have a problem on Francis Street with a fence like that. Mm -hmm. That uh, and we passed an ordinance because of when the ice storm came. We can't keep, we can't allow, you know, here and there because we have utility people sometimes that put dogs in there. 
Remember, we used to have some people who would do self reading of their meters because they had mean dogs inside their fence. We can't have this stuff. Uh, and so this Board of Adjustments gets to make these decisions without the council having part the in Board it. of Adjustments, right. They, there is a, um, there is an appeals process, and, and in that situation, the Board of Adjustments actually is an appeals to the decision of our inspector for a variance, and that was the variance that was granted. Now, to explain a little further on the fence, this is a single fence, this is not boxed in, it is a fence running along a single property line from the road to the back of the property. It does not really box in a fence. It doesn't, it's not boxing any of our utilities in. It is just a single. Where's it at in relationship to our easement between individual houses? Because we do have utility easements. Correct. Um, it would be dead center on, according to the person that installed the fence, it is on the property line. Now this is an older, subdivision. I'm not sure that you would see side easements there. I haven't pulled the plat to know. Um, I don't, I'm reasonably confident we do not have uh, utilities running along on the side easement there. Everything's in front front yard. I would basically request that when they do this stuff, mm -hmm. that they have knowledge of the utilities and stuff like this. Because if they put that in in concrete in our easement, and we have to go in there because there's an issue, with uh, water, sewer, electrical, uh, and stuff like that, we'd, we'd have to tear out the fence to get to it. At possibly. their cost. Yeah, and at, so but that's at line, the homeowner's cost. That's at the homeowner's cost. Yeah, I, I have a fence on an easement too, and I know that if the utility truck comes in, they tear up my fence, I gotta pay for my own fence. But, you know, it, it always causes problems when those fences gotta be torn down. I only know of one incident where a person didn't care. Oh, go ahead, yeah. You can tear it out. I'm getting rid of it anyway. But, you know, we pass these ordinances for a doggone reason because it's caused a problem in the past. I mean, we had a problem with electrical. Couldn't get to it. Mm -hmm. uh, no gates or anything like this. Our utility people couldn't get in there. It doesn't happen all the time, but, you know, we start allowing this stuff. Uh, there should be a gate if it's all the way to the back of this property line. We got easement back there. But it's not a boxed in fence. No. There's no reason for But we're not going to drive through his yard. We go on our easement because we're not going to repair yards. You know, people never let us go if we okay. mess up their yard. We've had that problem too. I think we're gardeners. Good. Any other comments? Standing committees. Mike, your turn again. Oh. Uh, I called the meeting to order on August 4th. We had citizens' comments. Uh, Mr. Dan Deering uh, was there talking about uh, Glen Haven uh, Street. Uh, and we also had Mr. Randy Brown uh, and talking about uh, Bluff Circle. Uh, we had approved the minutes from our July 7th meeting already. Uh, anyhow, uh, basically what we did as a committee, we won, we approved the bids for repaving the entire uh, Glen Haven and recurving it to the tune of just shy of $96,000 to be done this year uh, prior to the uh, asphalt plants closing, but in line with our normal schedule for them to come in town so we don't face two mobilization charges for their equipment. So it will be done this, this, this fall. Uh, on Bluff Circle, we talked to uh, Brian, our street superintendent, he indicated he had talked. The problem with Bluff Circle was we had some low-hanging wires from the phone and cable companies up in there that the equipment couldn't get by uh, and through without tearing them out. And that he had talked to them on a couple of occasions. And the fact that Bluff Circle has deteriorated a little quicker than what he had anticipated. And so we're going to need to address that. And what we did by the committee uh, basically requested that John write them a letter uh, informing them that they will be needing to move it in preparation for work on Bluff Circle, uh, possibly as early as next fiscal year's paving budget. So we got that done and passed uh, through the committee. Uh, 
and uh, util utility available charge and impact fees. This is only in regard to natural gas, and it's only for new services from, from the date of this passing forward. Uh, but it was only $6, and yet it ran the city, uh, I think it was like 400 and some odd dollars, Mitch. Was that correct? Something like 400 to establish a gas service? That's like right. $270 just in material without including any gravel. $270 in part of material. Labor, uh, yeah. Labor, no labor. No, no, no labor equipment or correct. material. So basically, $6 as an impact fee. Uh, if you live there, it would be like a 30-year mortgage by the time all said and done. Uh, and it's the only impact fee that had not been touched since the 80s. And so uh, we felt like uh, we needed to uh, not subsidize it to that degree. So yes, you're going to be reading, seeing an ordinance of raising that to a more reasonable level. Uh, update on eliminating the 3% convenience fee for credit card and online payment. We have continued that, but we are going to be making a decision on continuing or cutting it off at our September meeting. Uh, because at this uh, past meeting, the city has already subsidized it to the tune of just shy of 25,000. Uh, so, you know, we're waiting on the county. They've been talking about uh, possibly being able to uh, cover that with uh, the COVID money, uh, but the longer they go, uh, putting off a decision on it, uh, we as an entity cannot afford to continue to subsidize this. And it has grown somewhat with, uh, with people knowing it's available now without putting on the additional fee. And so uh, we just feel like there's got to be a point where a decision is made and we're prepared to make ours. Uh, Co-USA. We got an update on it, uh, and the department's updated us on the repairs they've done, the work that they've been doing, and that, and uh, subject to your questions, we have three ordinances in regard to utilities. All right, bill number 2020-12. Could we have a reading of that bill, please? Yeah. An ordinance amending Ordinance 911 and 1168 regarding impact fees and other rates for natural gas services provided by the city of Waynesville, fixing an effective date. An ordinance amending ordinance number 911 and number 1168 regarding impact fees and other rates for natural gas services provided by the City of Waynesville, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Second. Vance? Who second? Mr. Yeah. Conley? Yes. Yeah. Any discussion? Yes. Isn't it normal to have each ordinance individually instead of two combined? You're combining two on this, number 911 and number 1168. Was the old ordinance two different ones combined also? It's just the beginning one, the, the 911, just dealt with the availability um, charge. So in order to make it easier, and especially when it gets codified, it's all wrapped up into one. That way all the fees regarding natural gas are in the same ordinance. Well, I can remember back when the city put in the natural gas, and people were given the opportunity at that time to get the line run to their house, and meter set whether you hooked up or not but you had to pay a monthly fee I think it was five dollars a month for the meter charge or something of that nature. It was six dollars yeah. And all the interior modifications had to be paid for by the homeowner. Mm -hmm. Anything past the meter risk. Because I remember also when the yard uh, <coughs> the lines put in there were quite a few complaints about the yard not getting fixed back fast enough to suit the citizens. Looking at this right here, a fireplace only 300 bucks, and you got on here. You got water heater, furnace, oven 250. What if a guy 
starts out and all he wants to do is hook it up for his water heater, but then he decides he wants to put it in the gas furnace. Is there going to be another charge for that? No, because you only have one. You only have one service to the home, and that's when we connect to their meter. Anything past the meter into the home, that's going to be up to them. So if they want to run additional lines, additional appliances, that doesn't that doesn't affect the impact fee at all. Well, then my my next question is, why would the fireplace be three hundred bucks versus two fifty for one of you? Maybe because. It uses so little gas, they normally don't use it in the summer, whereas a stove, a water heater, a uh, furnace, all those are year-round that they're I, using I gas. I that point. The object is to get the customer to use the gas product. That's the object. Yep, that's what it is. But for just the fireplace, the gas usage on a single fireplace, or even two natural gas fireplaces, is it doesn't pay. My, um, when this gas came, we had an apartment complex being built in the city, agreed at the time to give them some rebates to build their apartments. They didn't put in natural gas, they put in electric. Point being on that, the city should have said, hey, you've got to go with the natural gas, because the city has been financing this department for years. Something I want to kind of <clears throat> make sure we, we differentiate now. The cost that you're talking about, the, the $300, Right. Used to be 250. Okay, in the old ordinance, it says 250 for a fireplace. The other one that we have here with appliances such as the oven, the water heater, it says 250. It used to be 200. Okay, so we bumped them each 50 in this in this committee. That is the cost to install the meter. Okay, so the actual cost, material only. Is two hundred and seventy dollars. That does not include our labor or gravel to backfill our ditch. That includes your meter, your meter set, your fittings, your regulator, all the pieces that we have when we install that meter is two hundred and seventy dollars. Okay, without gravel or labor because we install it. So when we were looking at this previously, it was two hundred for appliances and two fifty for fireplace. Every meter we installed, we were falling behind because we were just not recouping the cost of what it actually cost the city to install the, install the meter. So we're still behind, not as far. Like I said, the actual cost is around $270 only in material. We're basically throwing in our labor and gravel. And, um, equipment time to backfill the ditch, dig the ditch, and set the meter. Right, we're not for problems. Right, we're not, we're, not, we're not making anything, but we were, we were losing. So that cost right there is, a, um, is kind of sef separate than, than the service availability fee. That's a, that's a separate fee and used for separate reasons, okay? So we try to set these costs uh, in Section 2, A and B, Fireplace and Appliances, to somewhat recoup or get a little closer to recouping a new service installment cost, okay? Now, you know, you see one's less expensive than the other one, so we are extending that thinking that over time you will recoup those with the usage of gas, okay? So that's why you see, like I said, the oven, water heater, furnace, appliances is less than just a fireplace on it. It's basically because re you recoup the cost on furnaces and everything faster than you do a fireplace. Because they use it, correct. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we, we had, um, during Mike's meeting, we had some uh, numbers projected. And some of these uh, installations that we were using that only had a fireplace, um, we had projected those out maybe 8 to 10 years before they even paid for the cost of the installation of the meter. Not, not if we use the entire six dollar availability fee, which what it used to be, we would run out, you know, maybe eight years before, if they didn't use any gas, before we ever recouped the amount of money that we had lost on the installation of the meter. So, you know, that in reviewing that with the committee, they felt like that was that was a little too long to recoup because, and in, in eight to ten years, you're generally there checking something, you know, you're, you're just not getting the money or the return on the investment. 
if, the if that helps him. The lifespan of the meter is 10 to 12 years. Right. And so, I mean, we're looking at shortly thereafter redoing uh, another meter. I mean, I, and they don't my pay, meter, they don't pay for that. my meter was, was uh, about 11 years old when they had to come out and redo the diaphragm. I mean, so, uh, you know, bottom line, uh, a lot of people with just fireplaces, well, like this past winter, I have two. I never needed to use them. So I, I used barely, I was just doing the door charge for the $6 availability. That's all I did for, for having the gas. So uh, it just, we felt like it needed to go up. It's the only one we had to address. And uh, we've done all the other ones have been done more than once. Okay, and they're not subsidized <coughs> Richland whatsoever. No, no, not whatsoever. And this actually dated back, Mike brought this up in the meeting. This this rate, I think, was set a year after the Richland agreement was made. So it's aged. Or something like that, yeah, it's, it's aged as well. Um, we uh, just, you know, so you know, we've compared this estimated use and, and this availability fee with propane and, and other um, heating options just to make sure we're competitive because we do want to sell this as a utility as a city. We want to remain competitive with, you know, all those other options. So we, we've evaluated that as well in these costs to make sure that we haven't, you know, totally, totally blown ourselves out of the water with the pricing, okay? Any other discussion? Uh, I, I kind of got the same question as Bill. Mm -hmm. We're amending two ordinances and one ordinance. Why don't we just rewrite the one ordinance that we're amending? Because just like all the other utilities, electric, water, um, your sewer, all that, your availability charge and your impacts are all in the one ordinance. And like uh, Councilman France said, the other utilities have been um, amended a lot more than the natural gas. So unfortunately, we weren't. They, they didn't do anything like that back when they added the impacts. So doing it now brings everything under one ordinance, and it's easier to codify that way. Let's have a roll call vote. Uh, Councilman France. Absolutely. Councilman Conley. Yes. Councilman Liberty. Yes. Councilman Rice. Yes. Councilman Curtis. Yes. Councilman Davis. Yes. Councilman Farnham. I guess. Passes. Thank you. We have a resolution appointing certain members of the Board of Directors of the Central Ozark Utility Service Alliance, LLC, CO-USA, fixing an effective date. We have a motion on that. Motion. Cecil. Clarence. Discussion? Okay, so um, as you guys are aware, Bruce Harrell's retired, um, and we have uh, the appointment and reappointment of members on the CoUSA board. Um, currently, we have two direct or director members, which one was Bruce, the other was Mike, and we had an alternate with Mitch McDonald, the public works director. Um, so we're updating these members to uh, some terms have expired. I actually am new, so uh, we did that through this resolution. So you will see John Doyle as a director, Mike France again as a director, we're not changing that, and Mitch as an alternate um, director for CoUSA. Voice vote. Motion. Or should we just go motion? Motion. Please. Motion. Mike? Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. We got a motion and a second. I just need to raise the hands. Raise your hands. Bill number 2020-13. Can I have a reading of that bill? An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an intergovernmental service agreement with the city of St. Robert in regards to solid waste management services fixing an effective date. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an intergovernmental service agreement with the city of St. Robert in regards to solid waste management services fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mike? Second. Mr. Curtis? <coughs> Discussion? Is there expiration on this or just change um, it later? So the agreement, the agreement on with with the city. So what we have done, we, we went out to bid the trash as you all, all are familiar with. We received two bids 
and one intergovernmental service agreement. In review of the bids, um, one bid was for two years up to four years with uh, increases. The other bid was a solid five years. And then the intergovernmental service agreement that we received was, you know, a two-year agreement. And we can get out of this agreement with St. Robert. Um, so in reviewing the bids and comparing them to the intergovernmental service agreement, this was the best option as far as leaving the city the ability to, you know, um, get out of the agreement maintain, or stay in the agreement as well. You, you, we have more options with this agreement than we did with the bids. The bids were more, uh, they were more time and a little bit more stringent and more money. costly. Mm -hmm. more, more, money. more costly. And the whole reason is we have an intent to ultimately get into the trash business. But with some of the fiscal things we have going on right now, we didn't feel that it was prudent to go on our own because just the price of one truck is a used one is about $90,000. And so we're going into an interim agreement with them with the, at the lowest price, no rate increase for the entire duration of this thing. We can get in and out with appropriate notice, which they can also do. Uh, and it lets us breathe a little bit to get into our own trash business, as well as uh, what happened, we found out state law does not allow us to service areas and compete with civilian businesses. So like where Ziegenbein currently has customers that is on South Side, Hunters Point, Taylor Hills, all those things, we could not then address that, which, doesn't, which makes it non-cost effective to jump into it. We would be paying a bunch of money to cover the costs of doing that. So and on now that, we've got a couple of years, and we have that to same two years notice. Yeah, there's two years that we cannot service commercial within the city as well. So yeah. that works on your profitability as a city. Um, so you have to take that into consideration. We're probably a couple months, maybe three or four months. So we're 16, 18 months into that two years, but. There's a solid two years from notification, which this council has set notification out that we intend to collect commercial, but we cannot do that for a period of two years since we sent that letter. So at that point, we hope to be towards the end of this where we can start, you know, confidently sending a termination of this IGSA to St. Robert to do our own thing. But Right now, the only thing that the city of Waynesville is guaranteed is the residential service within the city. So we don't need a stipulation. It's in the contract. It's in the contract. It's, in the it's contract. there. <coughs> sure. Yep. Thank you. It's there. Yes, sir. Good yep. question. No other Great. discussion? <coughs> well, has, has the current trash company given an effective notice as to when they will okay. stop? So, um, yes, they have. And just so you know, um, prior to, you know, letting everybody know we we wanted to personally call Ziegenbein they have done the city incredible um, service over years oh, so great. they are great they're great people hard workers and provided us great service so you know I personally called them after after the decisions made spoke with them and some things and you know there are, there are a lot of services they're going to continue to provide in in the city trash wise they, they have a lot of commercial businesses in the city that they will continue to, to provide that service to um, up, up until the two years. Um, so yes, they, uh, they have been notified. Their last day will be, um, uh, they told me, I think it was August 27th. Is what they say I read somewhere that St. Robert was talking about September 1. Yes. Taking off. And, and that was an agreement made with them and St. Robert at the table. Um, because, you know, I was very open with, with the de decision and where we needed to be. And, and Ziegenbein's been good to work with even through that. And they said we would like to stop, you know, August 31 is kind of where we had them uh, planned out to. And they said we would like to stop in August, which would be the 27th, I believe. I mean, this whole thing started based upon them wanting to retire right. and sell out. So that's when we started into this process. And it's been going uh, since January, December time frame. 
It'll be seamless. Will it be seamless for our citizens? I mean, there won't be any right change now, in yes. schedules or anything like that. There will be a change in schedule because there is a requirement for uh, recycling in our um, in in our advertisement, and St. Robert is still providing that service with recycling. Ziegenbein has done it for so long um, that they can do this in one day and do recycling in two days. St. Robert's not 100% sure they, they can, so they wanted to add an extra day in there for trash pickup just in case because, you know, they're, they're new at this. Right. So they wanted to make sure that they did the city a good job but wanted the time allocated there just in case they needed an extra day for the city to get the trash picked up off the, off the curb. Um, and until they kind of get worked into the, the project, you know, and going, they, they're going to provide trash pickup over a two-day period with the recycle program as well. Okay? So there might be a modification in the pickup dates in, in the city. When are they planning on informing the citizens of Waynesville? We, after we give them this resolution, I expect to get a full out schedule for the city of Waynesville okay. to post on our Facebook okay. page. Okay. That and Tracy, Tracy will, we've already got other stuff, other ways of getting hold of everybody to let them know because if they start, they start. They're going to start the week of the, you know, September 1st, so they may pick up like, I think that was the. First is on a Tuesday. Yeah, I think they were going to pick up yeah. either Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday. And that's only a couple of weeks, so we want to make sure that we get it out to everybody. What's right changed. now, I know that I'm Thursday. Mm -hmm. Is the whole city Thursday? No. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. it's all one day. The, the, the city trash pickups <coughs> Thursday, the city um, recycle will be Thursday and sometimes it is on Wednesdays. They will they will have to do two days with the trailer, but the trash is Thursday for Waynesville. Right now. No further discussion. Madam, call the uh, roll. Councilman Farnan? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman France? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance passes. Economic Development Committee. Councilman Farnham. All right. We met on August 4th at 5 p.m. Uh, we had a forum present. There was no citizen comments. We approved the minutes from the previous meeting. We had quite a discussion on the Placid County Growth Alliance and our participation in it. And uh, after quite some time, we made the decision to appoint a member, which we have in our packet tonight, I believe, a uh, resolution on that. Back to Mayor. Yes, we do. Uh, we, our business spotlight we have coming up for September is Plastic County Abstract and Title Company. And right now in October, we don't have anything scheduled. So, uh, we did discuss some other business, the upcoming events, the homecoming parade, set for uh, September 25th at 2 p.m. I guess that's COVID pending, unless things get worse or whatever. October 3rd and 4th, a truck or treat event. October 17th, Pumpkin Fest. Am I reading these dates wrong here? Oh, Pro Fest, excuse me, Pro Fest, October 3rd through 4th. Truck or Treat is October 17th, and Pumpkin Fest is October 31. I don't think we discussed all those meetings. That's what's on my notepad here for the public view. Uh, any questions? We have a resolution, a resolution appointing the city of St. Louis. St. Waynesville represented to the Pulaski County Growth Alliance. Do I have a motion? I'll make that. Mr. Second. Farnham? Mr. Liberty? I have a voice for Just show of hands. Thank you. Congratulations, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Police Committee, Mr. Liberty. Meeting was called to order at 3.30. Uh, Mike France came as a citizen. So as citizen comments, he requested no parking sign at the bottom of Bobby Dale Road at an intersection uh, because of problems with vehicle parking there. It uh, actually blocked 
the travel way of two vehicles. And after discussion, the committee agreed, and it was approved to go forward to the full council. Uh, minute, approval of minutes on July 9th was approved. Police Department printer and copier update. It was approved to purchase of a one-time payment. That was more cost effective than paying payments. So that's why we went with the recommend the one payment. Police Department updates, committee briefed on updated grants. On call policy update for animal shelter was approved. Went into closed session at 345, came out at 407, being no business to come before the committee in open session. At 407, the meeting was adjourned. Next meeting, sorry, 408. Next meeting will be September 3rd, 2020 at 330. Okay, we have two proposed ordinances from the police committee. Bill number 2020-06. Reading the bill, please. An ordinance authorizing overtime pay in regards to grant funding through the Missouri Highway Patrol Highway Safety Grant Program, fixing an effective date. An ordinance authorizing overtime pay in regards to grant funding through the Missouri Highway Patrol Highway Safety Grant Program, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Mr. Liberty. Second. Mr. France, seconded. Discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call. Councilman France? Yes. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank that you. passes. Proposed ordinance, bill number 2020-08. Reading of the... An ordinance prohibiting parking on certain portions of Francis, Prospect, and Bobby Dell Streets, fixing an effective date. An ordinance prohibiting parking on certain portions of Francis, Prospect, and Bobby Dell Streets, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Which one must go first? I'll, I'll do second. Okay. Mr. Liberty first, Mr. Pratt second. Discussion? I don't, we have other streets we have no parking on. Why don't we look in, into combining all those streets and, and there's no parking into one ordinance? List all the streets that we have for no parking in one ordinance. Would our clerk like to do that? No, I don't mean to do it tonight. I don't mean to do it tonight. No, I don't mean now, but that's something to look into. Yeah, that, 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 I've got no, no problem with doing it this way, but I don't know how many streets we have no parking on. Mm -hmm. We have a separate ordinance for every one of those streets. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And we can list those streets in the application if you would like. Right. Mm -hmm. Under the blanket ordinance when it, talk, when it talks about the, the punishment. We just passed one last week. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. makes more yeah. sense to me to have separate ones. Well, you, yeah, you have to have separate but we can list all the streets together under the complication if you want yeah, to do well, that. We do that with the street ones, right? Mm -hmm. They're all on one of them. They list different ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're different ordinances, but we can list them on in the code. Just something I think we want to look into. No further discussion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman France? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. That Thank ordinance you. passes. Road and grounds. Mr. French, you're lucky again. Oh, boy. August 6th, I called meeting order at 430. We did have uh, all members present. Uh, Mr. Deering uh, was there along with his grandson. And so was uh, our illustrious past park board member, our park uh, superintendent. Mr. Randy Brown. Uh, that's where we discussed Glen Haven Road also, uh, and we discussed uh, Bluff Circle. Uh, we approved the previous uh, meeting's minutes, and we talked about the leak dump and the new procedures on it, where we have keys that people can sign out to go in there. Uh, and we talked about 
on weekends or holidays how they're supposed to do that, get a hold of them. Uh, they'll get home directly to the police department. There are multiple keys, and that they'll pay. You'll have their license or something, some picture ID that is uh, Xerox or whatever borrowed until they return that key. Failure to return the key, twenty-five dollars. Uh, sale of city-owned lots on Center Street. Uh, this street has has never been developed, uh, but we had some lots that were on there. And so we authorized the city to sell those as a council. Uh, and the bids were due to be open the day after this meeting. So we don't know if we got any bids or anything. Um, currently, we, we did not receive bids for those lots on Center Street. OK. Well, so we still, they can be sold based upon our permission that we gave. That's correct. OK, good. Uh, Street Department update. Brian said, stated that the Street Department has been busy with the storm cleanup. They also completed five utility cuts and trimmed several neighborhoods, uh, trees that are heading out, out in the streets. Uh, several streets had to be swept two and three times due to the storm. Completed 22 work orders, which consisted of picking up dead animals, patchwork, potholes, two new street signs, and replaced some old street signs. Mr. Adams stated that he is looking at street work overlays and will bring the list of streets to our next meeting. Uh, other business, Chairman France stated the intersection of Francis Prospect and Bobbydale needed to have parking signs. Uh, and basically, this came to our committee because it's roads and grounds from the police committee. It was also determined by roads and grounds and recommended for approval. Uh, there was a need for a closed session. Uh, we went into closed session at uh, 4.58. Councilman Thorne made a motion to enter into open session. Uh, Councilman Connolly seconded. A uh, motion passed. We came out into open session at 5.09. Chairman France would like to entertain a motion that Roads and Grounds Committee meeting be moved from 4.30 to next month. And we'll start meeting at 4 p.m. versus the 4.30. Subject to your questions, my next meeting will be on September 3rd at 4 o'clock. No other questions? Finance Human Resource Committee. Councilman Liberty. Meeting was called to order at 5 p.m. No citizen comment. Uh, approval of minutes. Minutes of July 9th meeting was approved. We reviewed the bills. A vote was called to approve the paying of the bills. And that was approved. Revenue tracked in at 51% of budget predictions. Expenses at 50% of budget predictions. Uh, they distributed uh, city's annual budget audit. <clears throat> Other business, the COVID invoice for the CARES Act reimbursement was sent to county on August 7, 2020. Ordinances of ad valorem, property tax rate, and for the lease purchase of Peterbilt dump truck due to Volkswagen grant funding. Meeting was adjourned at 6.09 p.m. Next scheduled meeting, September 10, at 5 p.m. No questions? Yeah. Claire? Yep. You said on August 7th is when the bill was sent to the county for the COVID. Have we heard anything from them? Just yet. We heard uh, yesterday. Yeah, it's the 7th, I think. We heard yesterday back. They had a few questions. Um, so I read their, um, their kind of Daryl Todd's report of their meeting uh, yesterday or today, I guess. Today. Looked like to me what they were doing. They approved some businesses today. They have two committees, one doing business side, the other kind of doing cities and schools, municipal. municipal. They are going to address those um, in September, the month of September. Now, we, we submitted ours the 7th, okay? A um, couple weeks go by. We, we receive a couple questions, maybe up to five questions, which we have answered and resubmitted. 
and we're kind of expecting something in this September time frame because that is when they stated today they were going to review these um, uh, businesses. So uh, are these cities, municipalities? So that's um, that's what we're hopeful for. It wasn't any. The questions really weren't um, discarding any of the amounts that we've seen or we delivered on the on the invoice. They were just asking to you know, make sure that it, it met the requirements of the CARES Act money. Okay? Well, I was concerned about what we said earlier about 25 grand. And sure. The sure. The credit yep. Okay. Yeah. So we are, uh, that's still in play. Um, I, they, they haven't fully reviewed it, but that was a question, and we kind of put some supporting data in there from other agencies to kind of, you know, show them where we got that from that we didn't just make it up. Um, we actually found it to be approved, so um, we That was included in there. Let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, we have three proposed ordinances coming out of the Human Resources. Bill number 2020-09. Reading, please. An ordinance to establish procedures for disclosure of conflicts of interest to comply with Senate Bill 262, fixing an effective date. An ordinance to establish procedures for disclosure of conflicts of interest to comply with Senate Bill 262, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Fr Mr. Second. Mr. Mr. Davis. Discussion. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman Franks? Yes. That passes. Bill number 2020-10. Could you read the minute? An ordinance fixing the ad valorem property tax rates for the city of Waynesville for the year 2020 on all taxable property within said city. An ordinance fixing the ad valorem property tax, tax rates for the city of Waynesville for the year 2020 on all taxable property within said city. You have a motion. Motion. Second. You didn't look up, so... It was Mr. Conley, Mr. Yeah, France, the second discussion. Roll call. Councilman France? Yeah. Councilman Conley? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. That passes. Bill number 2020-11. Reading, please. An ordinance approving a lease purchase agreement with Security Bank of Pulaski County for the purchase of a 2020 Peterbilt dump truck, fixing an effective date. An ordinance approving a lease purchase agreement with Security Bank of Pulaski County for the purchase of a 2020 Peterbilt dump truck, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Mr. Curtis, Mr. Liberty, seconded. Discussion? Madam Clerk? Call the roll. Councilman France? Absolutely. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. Waynesville St. Robert Joint Airport Committee. Mr. Doyle, would you report that? Yes. So the Waynesville St. Robert Joint Airport Board meeting was held July 28th at 3 o'clock p.m. in St. Robert. Uh, the organizational meeting is what started the meeting. Um, again, they was, uh, there was a need to appoint and elect a vice chairman to the airport board since Bruce Harrell has retired. Um, a motion was made and seconded and the motion passed to uh, appoint me to that position. So um, I am the uh, vice chairman to the airport board. At that point, the uh, organizational meeting was adjourned and the regular scheduled airport board meeting was open. Um, under the uh, operations manager, uh, Mike Guy, our operations manager, stated that the fuel sales were up. Uh, he also has recently purchased a new pickup truck and expects to purchase a snow plow in the near future for snow removal on parking lot and, and places like that. Uh, Dave Robinson was also at the meeting, attended the meeting, and Dave reported that uh, the airport's fire truck was inoperable due to a hose nozzle being broke. 
but that was a temporary situation and uh, that has since been repaired and fixed and operations are normal. Um, Contour was uh, on, on the uh, phone at the meeting and they reported a time performance at 95.3% with the only cancellations due to the fire truck being down. Um, MoDOT Aviation sent documents to the to be signed for the CARES Act fund. The airport was granted $69,000 in this in this fund. Um, SOP marketing report. The marketing efforts were resumed on June 1st of 2020 for the Waynesville St. Robert Airport. Social media ads were running on Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger for months of June and July. Um, during this time, over 70,000 people were reached. Uh, there were 1,000 people in engaged with our post and focused on the Facebook page. Um, so we had another preliminary submittal of a terminal area master plan by Burns and McDonald. That plan was under review and approved at that time. Um, it will now be sent to MoDOT for, for approval. The, uh, the next meeting will, will be Tuesday, August 25th at 3 o'clock p.m. in Waynesville City Hall. And from that meeting, it was determined an ordinance is required for the extension of the original taxiway project with, uh, I believe it's Crawford Murphy Tilly, uh, to complete and finalize the project, um, which that ordinance is in your packet. We do have a proposed ordinance, bill number 2020-14. Reading, please. An ordinance amending ordinance <coughs> number 2297, authorizing the mayor of the city of Waynesville to execute a supplemental agreement for a state block grant agreement between the city of Waynesville, city of St. Robert, and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission, fixing an effective date. An ordinance amending ordinance number 2297, authorizing the mayor of the city of Waynesville to execute a supplemental agreement for a state block grant agreement between the city of Waynesville, city of St. Robert, and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission, fixing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Mr. Liberty. Mr. Davis. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman France? Yes. Thank you. Passes. Any other business? <clears throat> City Administrator's Report. So this won't take long because we have went through uh, most of what I have on my report. Um, something I would like to inform the council is uh, the 2021 department budget meetings have been uh, scheduled for the month of September. Obviously, we will be looking at the 2021 budget year. We will bring our hopes is to bring a um, uh, preliminary review of the 2021 budget in the October meeting and hopefully a final approval of the 2021 budget in the November meeting. So, but these budget meetings are planned for September or next month. Um, solid waste sanitation agreement, we've talked about that. I've received an update that Thursday and Friday, as it stands right now, are the pickup days for trash in the city of Waynesville. Um, they will do recycling on Thursday, but the city of St. Robert would like to have the opportunity to adjust that schedule if needed. But right now, that is, that is where they stand with our pickup dates in the city of Waynesville, okay? Um, CARES Act invoice, we've discussed that. It's been submitted. We've received uh, communication back, and, and that seems to be going well. Uh, Bluff Circle and the utilities, Mike's, Mike's, Mike's explained that very well with the natural gas. Uh, Francis Street, we've discussed. I'd like to also discuss the park restroom project and if you haven't had the opportunity to go down and look that's coming along nicely and looks very nice it's a it's a great addition to our park i cannot wait till that is open um, because that is that is really going to work uh, nicely upcoming events uh some things i would like to just note august 21st bmb theaters is opening that's a big deal for us it's going to be on our facebook page it, it's it's exciting and then, obviously, August 24th, school starts. Be aware, um, traffic is... Uh, I thought they closed all schools. Um, no, just high school. 
Just the high school is my understanding. High school's yes, sir. Yeah, they're going virtual in a couple of weeks. Week. Do you have a schedule for the councilman for budgets? Budget meetings. Budget meetings. Yes. Can you email it to us? We can. Thank you. And you guys, uh, just so you know, they are also on my calendar in my office, and you guys are welcome to my office anytime to see what's <coughs> scheduled um, and what's there. So if you're in there, but we will we will email that to all councilmen as well. I, it's important to attend if you can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. Council comments. Let's start with Mr. France. Uh, I got the new packets. I don't care for them one bit. <laughs> I'm supposed to be able to inform not only y'all, but members of the community. That's why we have TV up here. And you can't remember every aspect of what you've talked about. And I just think that uh, whether those minutes have been approved or whatever, uh, they have certain points in them that need to be brought out to our citizens. And so uh, I just uh, think that we ought to have something that helps us remember what we've all discussed in a little better detail than what I was able to do tonight. Hang on to your notes then. At the meeting, just go ahead and hang well, on. Well, we don't get notes at the meeting. That's where we're making the notes. Now, I could brief on the previous month's minutes from like July at this meeting, but I, you know, it just, I don't know whether any other committee chairmen had those same issues, but uh, when the packet got to me on Tuesday night and I noticed it, uh, I was, I would not have. Mr. Connolly, I got to halfway agree with Mike. He has, he has a memory problem. Uh, <laughs> but no, I would, I would like to see some sort of note myself so that I know what. A little, a little more about what was discussed. Uh, schools opening virtually for the high school for, for a week. I guess kindergarten opened yesterday or today. Middle school and sixth grade, elementary, so I'll go back tomorrow, off the 24th. I keep thinking tomorrow's the 24th. He's got a memory problem. Yeah, I got a memory problem. <laughs> this, this end of the board is old. <clears throat> That's why I started there first. Just that. <laughs> well, no, I can't say that because I had a person turn me down for an appointment because she was worried about her elderly clients. <laughs> and I pointed out that at 80, I might be considered elderly. It didn't do any good. You still, still rescheduled me for next week. Might be. Something might be, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I got a younger brother, so. Mr. Anyway, Liberty. We'll, uh, we'll let it go from there. Let, let Mr. Liberty expound. Thank you to Mr. Doyle, his staff, and the employees of the city. Uh, Y'all doing an excellent job. You make us look good. I appreciate it very much. Mr. Russ. Yes, with Labor Day weekend coming up, I want to remind everybody that the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign is starting tomorrow. It's going to run until September 7th. The goal is to remind all motors that driving impaired is a bad decision, which we all know that. Just keep the roads safe. Mr. Curtis. What I learned from Lawrence Beamer, he used to come in here in the city council, he'd sit right there about where Randy was, and you looked at him and you thought, Wow, who's this guy? And I learned, uh, I kind of judged the book by its cover. He was an intelligent guy. I stopped and talked to him, and that's why he served on the park board. I said, why do you come to our city council? I want to know what's going on in the city. I said, why don't you serve? And he took me up on it, and he served on the park board. Dry sense of humor. But uh, I like the guy, and I'm dearly going to miss him. Yeah. Mr. Davis. Well... I would like to give a shout out to my daughter who decided she would watch the city council meeting from Kansas just to hear the next state. Uh, there's kids that are turning 15 and getting their driver's permits and school is starting back up all at the same time. Uh, me personally, I'm gonna let my daughter drive my car to school in the morning 
as their driving permit. So if you see the uh, blue sapper wagon weaving, it's not because I'm drunk, it's because somebody <laughs> else is driving. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Farnham. Well, I mean, it was the same thing or not, but I'm going to say it. <clears throat> we recently had a meeting, and it was reported on the internet some facts that didn't really reflect what happened in the meeting. Things said in a joking manner didn't come across like that when you read it on the internet, and it upset some people, and it made us all look bad. So my point is, before you lose your temper and start writing things about what you see typed in that internet, pick up the phone, call City Hall, call the councilman, you know, get the real facts, because mistakes happen. Thank you. My thoughts go out to the Beaver family. Uh, we're certainly going to miss him, but I think the, the appointment of Amanda to the board, a reappointment, is going to be a nice step forward. And we are looking for people that would be interested in serving on any of our boards and commissions. We're adjourned tonight. Randy Brown. <laughs> <laughs>